get laid with this one weird trick. Click here. What's up, everybody? It's your boy again, the Unabonger, and today I am bringing you my review of Pandemic by Richard C. Meyer and Renzo Rodriguez. So this is just, um, I guess I haven't counted the pages, but it is approximately at least 22 pages, approximately 20 pages, approximately basically a standard issue comic book. Now, I think this is the first time Richard Meyer has actually kind of put out a single issue, an actual single issue. Um, I think what he's trying to do right now is kind of um, basically create a publishing plan. And I think what he's doing, experimenting with this project, I guess you would say, I think what he's trying to do actually is basically figure out a little bit better printing schedule and kind of um, the real time it takes to get something from A to Z and um, put out on a real regular basis where you can know what's going on, that sort of thing. So anyway, this book starts out with a black woman in a high-rise building, and she is stealing everything she can. She's stealing money, she's stealing a bunch of laptops, she sees this giant TV, and she's like, yeah, I'm going to steal that too. Then all these rich white men... I guess we got one A, well, we got an Arab, we got like um, a black man too there up front prominently. Nice, nice. But anyway, we've got a bunch of rich men um, getting together in a conference room. And basically, we've got this quick little thing that talks about, hey, they're unleashing a pandemic and it's killing all these people and, and that sort of thing. Basically, in about, let's say, really, it's and it's kind of oddly dialogued i guess what's go for tokyo go for london go for singapore that could have been done differently i guess but anyway what it's really trying to get at and especially in the panel after that with the captions is all the rich people unleashed a pandemic on the world and it's killing people left and right and it's um obviously referring to our current covid19 pandemic and locking things down and that sort of thing so anyway, this woman overhears that, and then she gets found out because she makes an audible gasp. They hear it, they send in these, you know, their bodyguards, the men in black guys with the sunglasses and the black suits and the guns. They grab her, they don't kill her right away. They're about to, I guess, but then they figure out it's a power drill, and they don't kill her right then and there on the spot. They don't blindfold her, they don't put a bag overhead, they don't manhandle her too hard, but they uh, kind of take her, and they're basically going to get her out of there. And the unwritten thing is, hey, we're going to go kill you, but we just didn't blow your brains out right yet. So anyway, as they're taken off, a security guard that knows this woman sees her, says her name, we get a little backstory, she used to work here, then she whaps this dude in the face and makes a hair-raising escape to get out of there. She slides into this elevator, and on the first floor, she sees this coffee thermos sets up a little trap for him as they're coming down the elevator, too. They slip and fall in the coffee. She jumps on her little moped outside with these pizza boxes strapped to the back and buzzes out of there, and there is a military checkpoint that she comes to. And anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll skip all that so I don't basically tell the whole story. Anyway, she gets past this military checkpoint, and there's another one on a bridge. But there's all these people on the bridge, so she says, Oh, I'm sick to all these people. She makes a big deal out of it. She yells, and then everybody kind of starts running around. You know, a mob of people start running around like chickens with their heads cut off. So that's how she's able to avoid the next checkpoint, too. She tries to go to her a bunch of her friend's house um, and relative's house, but she sees that the police are kind of staking out all those spots. They end up closing in on her, and they have a little chase scene where she's still on her moped, and she ends up kind of evading them. And one of the <gasps> big surprises in this is that she goes into the back of a grocery store, and that's where they've got all these supplies like uh toilet paper like they've just got all kinds of toilet paper back there and you know they could have had it up front selling it to people then anyway she runs out the back she sees a woman with a mask on pushing a kid in a stroller and she's just like ah what was i doing grabbing this toilet paper ah here take it and the woman ends up being a fed i guess because she's got a gun and she ends up shooting a tranquilizer dart into the woman's arm and then some g-men come up our protagonist passes out 
and there's kind of some ominous talking between them, you know, some sort of ominous plans, and she ends up waking up, basically, in a uh, government facility in Mexico. I don't know, maybe it's a government facility, maybe not. It's, um, you know, ominous, but anyway, they're like, hey, we're kind of setting up a, a team, and we want you on it, that sort of shit, you know? And then it's uh, continued in Theosophy, I guess, um, a project that he's probably been pretty tight-lipped about, but he's been leading up to. That's probably going to be the next thing he's going to really be pushing, I suppose. So anyway, that is the story of the comic. Now let me kind of, um, I guess, break down some other parts of this as I go through it. As you can just kind of see from the video even, this artwork is fantastic. You know, this isn't really a superhero comic. Maybe that's what they're leading up to with the theosophy, who knows. But this is just kind of um, aimed at about 12-year-old boys' action comic. And yeah, I know the protagonist is a black woman with the side of her head shaved. But this is just an action comic. That's, that's kind of the group it would be really aimed at. The plot, while fairly thin, it works for a 22-page comic book great, and it's probably it's probably more what you want. I almost see, in a way, basically, Richard trying to really use this as an experiment and take advantage of a 20, 22-page normal-sized comic book and really try to tell a satisfying A to Z story and have it be action-packed, take um, advantage of the artist that you have, and try to appeal to your fan base. Try to appeal to a normal comic book reading fan base. You know, there's parts of it that are clunky, but meanwhile, I don't know. I don't know if you can necessarily blame. I don't know if you can necessarily say that's a bad thing because what he's trying to do is make traditional comic books, is make comic books that are aimed at about 12 year old boys. And the way this is written and kind of how it uses the space and uses the great artists that they have for this. It's a, it's a pretty good comic book. It's a pretty good comic book, honestly. Overall, I'm going to give this comic book an 8.5 out of 10. This is a very good comic book. I don't know if I could go through this and really tell you, oh, you shouldn't have done this, and you shouldn't have done that, and you should change this and change that and the other, especially in ways that would even really matter. You've got to make choices, and hey, it's a comic book. It's not as though like these are that bad of choices. There's a few little gotcha spots where like, oh, she runs in the back and realizes they've got all this toilet paper and Oreos and all kinds of stuff sitting in the back of this place. There's a handful of things that, you know, really say, hey, this whole pandemic is ah, fake and everybody knows it. And honestly, in real life, you know, I know that doesn't really pertain to this but in real life i've gotten to that point too where it's like yeah um i don't know that most people my age or younger even really have a whole lot to worry about from it anymore but i damn sure don't want to get it anyway 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 one of the uh things i kind of want to point out that's just in a way funny to me and uh richard meyer when and if he hears this review, he's probably going to groan and go, Ah, oh, Jesus, I can never catch a break on this shit. However, um, has anybody else realized that basically this starts out with a black woman stealing a bunch of stuff? She's stealing cash, she's stealing laptops, she's stealing a fucking TV. <sighs> <laughs> like you know you know hey listen guys you know that sort of shit doesn't bother me meanwhile um i don't know we'll just we'll just see how it goes we'll just see how it goes like i said it doesn't bother me if anything i think it's kind of funny my guess is he would not say oh no it's it's not at all intentional that i'm kind of making a meme about black people stealing but i don't know i don't know man the the real thing is hey listen he doesn't, for the most part, at this price point and what it takes to get it, it's not as though a lot of his quote-unquote haters, his detractors, are really still at this point going to be paying $25 for a single-issue comic book to get mailed to him eventually. I want to say, um, basically, it was March or April when he initially put out this crowdfunding project, and it is October now, so let's, let's say approximately six months it's really not too bad. Ultimately, I think I think that basically if if you're going to want to 
continue to do crowdfunding projects. I think that enthusiasm for um, a 22-page comic book is going to wane for $25 a shot. And I'm not trying to talk shit on you. I'm not trying to talk shit on this project. I, this is 100% a great illustrated comic book. A great written comic book, too. I'll give them that. Um, this is a pretty decently written comic book, too. It doesn't have those sort of gaps that um, Jawbreakers had. Basically, gaps in action. But, honestly, 25 bucks a shot for a single-issue comic book is still pretty steep. My suggestion would be to maybe try to do a graphic novel sort of thing, uh, basically three to four issues, maybe five to six issues, at the max even, of comic book pages, and one kind of um, trade paperback sort of thing, and then maybe you do something like this and have it as an add-on on that, and try to get that price point down to where, hey, it's going to be shipped with that too, try to get that price point down to where this is costing people maybe something like $10. Maybe it's a $10 add-on for like, hey, I'm going to do this other project too, and here's the first issue of it. That's my suggestion. This isn't perfect. This isn't the best thing ever. But meanwhile, it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a, um, to me, it's supposed to be a uh, kind of a single issue thing, kind of a tryout thing almost for um, probably both of them, because I want to say this uh, Renzo Rodriguez, he's drawn his kind of next book, Impossible Stars, which I'll be honest, I've already got ordered, and yeah, hopefully that'll be coming to me here in uh, basically a um, hopefully relatively short amount of time, too. I also um, have also crowdfunded Expendables Go to Hell, which, hey, once again, you gotta give it to Richard C. Meyer. I think he was the first one to basically do a celebrity kind of tied-in crowdfunded comic book, which, you know, with the Keanu one now, everybody's kind of getting into, so kudos to Richard C. Meyer for kind of being the first, if not one of the first, to that well as well. And then, hey, just as a, uh, I don't know, kind of a weird aside at the end of this, and this has probably already been in some video of his, diversity in comics and i just haven't seen it yet but anyway um do we know at all who um danky swint senior is who apparently died in 2020 i guess maybe i missed that video or those series of videos i would assume that is a um a father of a friend or an older friend that he knew from the military that has died recently, unfortunately. That's just a kind of an odd little thing. Because uh, my guess is this is not a person who has been um, in the publishing industry before and the comic book industry before. Not that I'm aware of, at least. My guess is this is a personal friend. And um, you don't see that in traditional comic books. Meanwhile, that is kind of a nice thing to do. And it probably meant something to him personally. Anyway... And then let's take a look compared to the cover, the front cover to the original line work on the front cover on the back page, basically the inside back cover. Can you spot the difference? Can you spot the difference? The differences are she's had some lines on her nose taken away. She's had some lines around her eyes lightened so they don't pop as much. And then the shadows in the background they no longer have rifles, they have handguns. I think those are the three changes that were made to the line art. Can you spot them? Hey Zach, do I get a no prize for that? Do I get a Splato Comics prize for that? Well, anyway guys, that's my review of Pandemic. If this is your first time to the Humane Garbage YouTube channel, please hit that follow button and tickle the bell to get notifications of new videos sent to your inbox and phone. Follow the official social media accounts of Humane Garbage at Humane Garbage on both Twitter and Instagram. Stay tuned for another video from Humane Garbage. And as always, remember to hit the pipe harder than you hit your wife and kids. <coughs>